Welcome to my channel. I'm Eve, the Creative Curator. Today we're going to be talking about dart manipulation, specifically pivoting darts. Now, if you've been on my blog before, you may have come across my dart manipulation post. I've got one on the different types of darts and I have another on slash and spreading of darts. Today we're going to cover pivoting darts. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you can be updated by YouTube every time I post a new video. <laughs> Let's start by looking at the tools you'll need when pivoting darts. So first up, as always, you know what I'm like, we have my trusted pattern master. You could use one of these, you could use a regular ruler, um, you could use a fashion curve. One second, let me grab my fashion curve. Here we go, this is the Shobun fashion curve. You can get this from, um, what's that place called, Amazon. <laughs> um, it's much longer than the Pattern Master, and I'll do a separate um, video about the both of them, actually, if that's helpful. As you can see, if I line them up um, front to back, you can see that the fashion curve is more flexible and significantly longer. Um, it has its own place, um, but I prefer this because I'm so used to it. You'll also want my other trusty favourite pattern making tool, tracing wheels. So this one you've probably seen me show off before is the spiky version and this version is the slightly, I don't even know what to call it, but that version. <laughs> I think this one is normally used for tracing um, carbon like patterns. I don't do that so I don't know. Um, but I think that's what that one's used for. This one puts like fierce holes in paper. I love this one. It's really good if you're cloning your clothes tracing patterns um, from clo existing clothing. Um, I'll do a video on that as well but you'll want one of these. Because we're pivoting, you'll also want a sharp point. This is an awl. Can you see? It's got a sharp, rusty point. Mine's so old. It's even got my name on it from when I was at university at fashion school. If you don't have an awl, you could use a pin. Be very fiddly. Or you could use like a push pin. I don't have anything to hand because I don't use push pins. I haven't got a push pin board. Um, but you could use a push pin or like a nail um, like a hammer nail, <laughs> but an awl is really handy. Uh, you'll also want, I've got two of these, paper scissors. So these are regular Fiskars long scissors. These are my dedicated paper ones. Fiskars are cool. They're made in Finland. Um, or, and these are great for straight lines, like long straight cutting lines on paper. If you are like me and you like a dedicated scissor, just for pattern making. I've got these lovely, look how short those blades are, if we compare them. And this is from More Plan, uh, which is based in the UK. And you can see, you see how I'm trying to line up the, um, the bit where they open and close up. You see how much shorter they are, significantly shorter. And these are really good when you have to cut around cur curves on paper. Like you just get so much more maneuverability. <laughs> um, I love them. I've had these since I was at fashion school as well. You can see it's still got the label with my name on it. Um, they're amazing. Then you'll also want, did I already cover the tape measure? You want a tape measure because this makes you feel more the part. No, it does come in handy as well, I promise. You'll also want some print stick because you might need to stick things down. Um, any kind of glue stick will do. I need to buy some more. That's nearly out. Something I forgot to add to my little stash here on the table is, um, so in the UK we call this masking tape. I don't know if it's called anything else in the US or around the world. Mine's not very sticky at the moment. I need to get some more of this as well. But some kind of tape that isn't scotch tape or cellar tape because that quite often will distort the paper, whereas this doesn't. So this comes in handy as well. You'll also want um, my tried and trusted 4H pencil. This, we all know this. We like this because this gives a nice, strong, thin line that's not soft and blurry. Like if you were using, no, it's too far away. If you were using like a HB or for heaven forbid, a B pencil, you're gonna end up with a really thick line. And we don't want that. We want a nice, sharp, like thin line with a, a strong H pencil. Okay, I'm, I'm very particular about that. 
Um, of course, if you haven't got one, don't worry about it. But you know, you will get the best line if you use a H pencil. Then an eraser of some sort. In England, we call them a rubber, but I've stopped using that word because it means something different in other parts of the world. <laughs> so I've got like a little Stettler one that's great for rubbing out big sections. And then I've got this little pointy um, Tombow, which is like an art pen supplier. Um, can you see that? It's like a tiny little... And it just maintains like a nice sharp point so that if I've got to get in and just erase a little bit, I can. Um, you don't need that little one. Like the... You don't need this one. That's just me being me. <laughs> and then you want coloured pens. I always... When I'm made modifying patterns... Um, I always trace off a copy and then I modify the traced copy just because you want to have your master pattern at all times to refer back to. And once you've cut into your master pattern, you're done for. <laughs> like, just don't do that. So always trace it off. And then I quite often we use different colour pens. I have, this is from my um, immediate pot that I have with me at all times. I have another selection over there in the corner. But I have a selection of different, these are the Stettler fine liners. Um, and I have, I'm always using these. Back in the day, I used to have one colour for one thing and another colour for the second copy and a third colour for the other copy. Now I just use them willy-nilly and make notes on my patterns. These are really handy because then you can see better what you've done different. Um, that's it for now. Um, gather your bits and then we'll crack on. Oh, going to knock something off. So you might be wondering, well, why would I need to pivot my darts? <laughs> um, the reason for that is if you think about a typical, I'm going to bring in my little lady. So if you think about the typical human figure, females specifically, she's got boobs, she's got a waist, and she's got hips, okay? Now, if you think of her like a cylinder, if we were to wrap a piece of card around her or a piece of fabric, there would all be, there would be all this space. Let me just turn her so you can see. From the hip line here to the bust, coming in at the hip, you've got all this space, and that's where your darts normally suppress fabric. Um, and the same on the back, there's a little bit of a can you see like it's not a straight line it's a curve so darts are a form of um, fabric suppression but sometimes you don't want a dart sometimes you want something different or maybe you have a dart here but you don't want the dart you want to move it somewhere else maybe it was a dress and you've separated it and you don't want a dart from the waist up to the shoulder point you want somewhere else so being able to pivot your darts is really handy because you can you can modify a design or a style line or even the fabric suppression from a dart into gathers or into tucks or pleats. And that's really cool because it gives you so much more control over the design of whatever it is that you're making for yourself. So that's why it's really important to know how to pivot darts. I have shown previously how to use the slash and spread method. The problem with that is that it does destroy the pattern insofar as you're definitely cutting in and you're gluing and you're taping whereas pivoting you don't really need to do that okay <laughs> like you don't really need to um it's only we will only use the tape and the pins did i mention pins earlier um when we're checking things after pivoting okay so the reason we're pivoting darts is to move fabric suppression around the body so let's get started with the pivoting darts tutorial so today I'm going to show you how to add a dart to the pattern and then use it as a form of fabric suppression elsewhere on the bodice. So this is my women's narrow shirt front. You can see it's got some shaping. It has a dart from the bust down towards the hip. Here's the natural waistline. And you can see on the side seam it has quite a bit of shaping as well. There's nothing from the underarm, um, shoulder or neck coming down. And this could easily be omitted for a less fitted look. So I've traced this off and here's one I prepared earlier. And what I've done is I've drawn a line through the dart because I want to know where it goes, like in towards the upper body. And then I've measured a point, 2.5 centimetres here, which is the best point. You should be able to see that. And then from there, I've drawn a line up towards my neck. And the reason for that is I want to open up this section of the pattern to allow some like extra space there, which I might then either gather to have like a gathered neckline, or maybe I would put little tucks in. But for now, we're just going to focus on opening this section up. So as well as marking in where we want to open up the bodice, I just want to quickly mark in 
my waist because I don't want the whole length when I'm developing this. So I'm just, I've lined up my, the two center parts of my dart and I'm just going to use the same green color. I'm just going to mark completely across here. And that is literally so that I can chuck the bottom off and just work with the top upper bodice section. I'm now going to trim that off just to remove it because it will be in the way and distracting. So I'm literally going to cut along this line. Now remember this block does not yet have any seam allowance attached to it. So I haven't got to worry about removing seam allowance as well. So now I've got a nice simple bodice to work with. I also want to make sure that I've marked in the underarm point to the hip point. And the reason for that is because this is a close fitted um, bodice block, I've got um, fabric suppression here and I also have it on the side seam. So I'm just going to sketch that in now or mark it in rather. And I literally do that with a ruler or my pattern master going from the hip point up to the underarm point like that. Okay, so my options at this point, I now have added back in the, can you see that? I <laughs> think you should be able to. I've now added back in what I had been removed for fabric, um, for suppression from the side seam and we have the waist dart as well. So if you just look at the outer perimeter, it's quite a, an easy fitted bodice block. Now what I want to do is maybe Let's say I wanted to have the same shaping in the lower section, but I wanted to have something interesting out here. Maybe you gathers or pin tucks, that kind of thing in the neckline. So what we could do is we could trace off from here and around. And I would come up this first dart leg and then I would pivot the pattern and I would come back down or I would pivot it that way. To come down and trace off and that would open up this dot and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So once upon a time I had a big roll of paper, pattern cutting paper from More Plan and in the process of moving to, I think it was before I moved to Wales from London, my big roll got given away because I didn't have any way to store it and I couldn't get it all the way to Wales. It would cost more to ship it than it would to buy a new roll. But I did take as much as I could with me. Um, and this is the, some of the last of it. If you happen to have creases in your pattern paper, what you should do is grab your iron, put it on the ironing board and just give it a little press, but without any steam. And that will just help to remove any crinkles and creases, much like how you would press a pattern if it's been folded up um, before you lay it out on fabric. So now that I have my piece of paper ready, I can trace off my original pattern ready for pivoting. Okay, so. I've traced off almost exactly the same. So I have a pair, um, not a pair, they're exactly the same. I've just omitted the best point and the open here information because I've got the lines drawn in. Now, the reason I've done it this way, and you'll have to excuse any background noise, my cat has decided to come and play. Um, the reason I've copied it exactly is so that we can compare the before and after. So I'm going to take a different pen this time. Let's take the blue. And what I'm going to do, because we're pivoting, so I'm going to get my awl, which is here. And we want to move this excess into this line. So I'm going to, and there's another reason for this. It will show you more easily the process of pivoting. So I've lined up this and I've lined up this and I have my all on my bust point. This is your pivot point, okay? Your bust point will be your pivot point. So what I'm doing is I'm now moving, can you see here, I'm moving the dart so that this leg overlaps this leg. You can see the two here. So this one, I'm going to come to meet here so that it closes that dart. And you want it to match here. And what that does is up here, we can now see 
that we've opened up this section, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it like that. I'm gonna remove my awl and I'm going to put my very heavy set of tools on top. And the reason for that is that will stop this from shifting. It does make it a little bit harder for you to see. Um, that's purple, that's blue. Maybe I should use a different color. One second. We have red and we have pink. Let's try pink. I don't know if it will be working. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the, so this opening line here. Oh shoot, no, I don't have enough space. <laughs> well, it's fine. It's just to show you the, the process. I'm going to take that line here. So this is the line that we want to keep. I'm going to draw along it, okay? So everything in pink is what we want to keep. And we also want to keep this line. We also want to keep the center front line. So I'm literally going over everything that we want to keep so that you can see clearly. Okay, we want to keep the bottom line, which is the waistline, but only, yeah, we've closed this completely. Yeah, we pulled it over. So we've closed that completely so we can come all the way across. And then we can come. Ah. Now we're going to trace that. Can you see the underside where it says open here? That's the line that we're tracing. Again, you can see that pink. And I'm just gonna grab, oh, I've got itch a little bit of paper because our shoulder, I think I've pivoted the wrong direction to what I intended. This is where a glue stick comes in handy. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of glue. there so I can now trace that curve which I won't be able to see as clearly but that's okay what I'm going to do is put the shoulder line in first am I still on camera yeah so here's my shoulder point and that's my armhole and I do leave there I'm just going to connect this shoulder. Normally it would have a bit of a natural curve. And then we're going to mark in the neckline. You can see this section is here. It's been opened up. And then we'll follow the armhole. Put in your notches, don't forget. Now I'm going to mark in my green line, which is here. So 
So that's my side seam. And that's coming all the way down here. And then I'm marking in the lower edge and this is going to naturally join as a curve. So you could mark along here. Obviously you don't want that kind of brutal point. So you would just curve it more naturally. Okay, now I'm going to cut out the pink version so I can show you. I mean, already you can see the difference um, where the areas overlap, but I'm going to cut it out so you can see more clearly what it is we're looking at. So I'm gonna show you how to actually true a dart. So on this piece, I have moved the waist dart up to the neck. I've pivoted it. This is what the original looked like, and this is what it looks like. Um, I've left, I've extended this piece of paper so that you can see more clearly why you shouldn't cut out until you've trued up all your darts. So this no longer exists. Let's scratch that because that has been closed. So I have a lot of paper and bits and bobs here. So we've closed that. These lines are all irrelevant. We don't worry about any of those, okay? So to true your dart, you need to remember that darts that are vertical go towards the center front or the center back. They go towards the center and darts that are horizontal are pushed down. So we want this dart to come towards the center front. This is the center front, by the way, <laughs> just in case you were in doubt. <laughs> so the way that I true my darts is I fold. So turn your pattern over and just fold along both lines that you have marked in. I'm going to get closer so I can see what I'm doing. So I haven't actually, as you can see, extended the dart back out again. It's still at the bust point. And for this example, it's fine, but normally you would move your dart point or your bust point away from your actual bust. This would be like the nipple, the fullest area usually, which is the nipple. You would want to move it 2.5 centimeters back so that you don't have a point because this is actually going to be gathered rather or maybe even little tucks i haven't decided yet um i'm not too worried about this because there's not going to be a physical dart coming down to that spot so i folded one and i'm now going to fold the other side and it's easier if you fold them both before you try to um true anything just because it gives you straight lines to work with so we've got my two fold lines we would want the dart so the fold line that I'm about to create to be pointing this direction which means I want to bring this now my dart is facing towards my center front can you see that so I'm going to pinch you'll want to there we go suppress that that direction so you've got your bus point covered and you're you're literally just like so okay so we can see that this is my um, excess and it's facing towards the center front I'm going to grab my cutting mat because now I want to use my tracing wheel. And I'm just going to trace around that. It's not quite meeting. There we go. Tracing wheel is your friend when pattern making. I love my tracing wheel, I wouldn't be without it. I'm gonna go over that again just to make sure. And now when I open it up, you can see let me trim along it now that I've made that mark. You wouldn't normally do this directly. You would draw a line and then cut along the line. But I'm cheating. And when you open it, you can see that you have that shape for your dart. Okay. Now this is actually going to be gathered, so it's not so important. I mean, it is, but so I'm going to literally 
stitch along there with a gathered stitch, a long stitch, so I could gather that all up. But if I was doing it as a dart, you can see that would lie really nicely. Okay, now let's compare it to this one. If I tape down my dart, you'll see that it's exactly the same. Can you see? Exactly the same. I'm just offsetting it a little so you can see. And here, and here, and that would match here if this was cut open and it would line up with that dart there. So two exactly the same pattern pieces, just slightly modified. This one has the excess suppression down in the waist and this one has it up in the neckline. And that is, is how you would true a dart. So we have that perfect, perfect, perfect. Let me just peel this off. There you have it, a perfectly true dart. Hey, you did it, you pivoted your first dart. I hope you found that enjoyable. Um, let me know in the comments below whether you found that easy or hard. What will you try to pivot next? Will you pivot your darts um, in order to create gathers or tucks or pleats? Like what have you got in mind? What creative use will you use? Um, don't forget to like the video, <laughs> follow my channel and hit the notification button. Um, and let me know in the comments also if there's anything else you'd like me to create for you. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.